Did you know that every minute, we create 278,000 tweets in the world? Did you know that every minute, we generate 1.8 million Facebook likes in the world? And did you know that every minute, we send 204 million emails in the world? Yes, that's a lot of data. Because as a world, we're now connected more than ever by devices and through networks. Data is everywhere around us. First of all, I want you to realize the impact that it has on your day-to-day -day life. But second of all, I want you to leave today this room knowing that the very same type of information collected can make our lives better and can revolutionize our society for the greater good. Every move that you make, every action that you take, data is being captured. Now, this may seem a little bit scary as we feel like Big Brother is watching. But really, big data, sorry, data leveraged correctly can make our lives easier. Still not convinced? OK. So I have three scenarios that may persuade you. Here's the first one. Raise your hand if you've ever watched Netflix. Right. Everyone, pretty much. Glad to see I may not be the only Netflix addict in here. So when you start watching Netflix, it will start making recommendations that you may like based on your viewing history. So if you've watched The Office, you'll be recommended TV comedy. You've watched um, The Godfather, you'll be recommended critically acclaimed movies. Better than that, Netflix will start emailing you on releases that you may like based on your viewing history. It's pretty wonderful, but it's all made possible because of data. Here's my second scenario to you. Raise your hand if you've ever used Google Maps. I got almost everyone. Those who didn't, I don't believe you. Um, so here's a typical sit uh, situation that could happen to any of, uh, of us. So you're at home. You have to head to this new restaurant. You have no idea how to get there. You decide to check your Google Maps to get the directions. Not only will it give you the directions, but it would also, also give you the fastest way based on traffic. So Google Maps can assess traffic using uh, multiple sources of information, such as local highway sensors or even um, people's smartphone location using their GPS. So not only Google Maps helped you get to your restaurant, but it actually might have saved you some time. And again, this was possible because of data. Here's my third scenario to you, my last one. Raise your hand if you've ever shopped on Amazon. OK, great. Almost everyone again. We're all on the same page. Uh, funny story, a couple of weeks ago, I went on Amazon to look for the latest book of my favorite writer, who happens to be Dan Brown. I read all his books. I absolutely loved every single one of them. I'm a big fan. While my initial intent was to only buy his last book, I ended up with five books in my shopping cart. Sounds familiar? <laughs> um, so what happened is that Amazon recommended to me books of other writers that I would also like. And guess what? Amazon was right because I ended up discovering new writers that I really actually enjoy. And finally, again, this was possible because of grades. So with these three scenarios, you can now understand a little bit more the impact that data has on your day-to-day -day life. There's a lot of data being captured. There's so much of it that we tend to call it big data. So what's the real definition of big data? It's the collection of offline and online information from various sources and devices that form a pool of information, a pool of data that we can analyze. These analysis can help uncover behavioral patterns, such as what you've watched, where you go, and how you shop. Sources of data could be personal, digital, um, and transactional even. And devices used could be your phone, your laptop, or your tablet. Nowadays, marketers have found ways to use this collected data, process it using advanced analytical tools, and interpret these behaviors so that we can market products to you in a more personalized way. It's pretty exciting, and that's what I do for a living. Us marketers, we have unprecedented access to data that we can use for marketing purposes. So there's a lot of data that we can use for that as well. And ultimately, the goal here is to really personalize all this 
um, all the marketing that we could do for, for, to personalize all this information to you. So I wonder as a marketer, because all of this, all of this data that we use has been solely done for economical purposes. Can we use all this data to really personalize other things in life other than marketing? Can we use the same type of information to help us live longer, improve our safety? The answer is yes. And how, here's how society can benefit from big data. So I have a statistic for you, a statistic that could shock you, whether you're a driver or a pedestrian. Driver distraction is a factor in about 4 million motor vehicle crashes a year. 4 million in North America. An accident can happen to anybody at any time really quickly. However, big data combined with sensor technologies can actually help limit or even decrease the accident rates. This is called intelligent transportation. Intel has been working on intelligent transportation systems that favor the interconnection between cars. What this means is that cars would be able to talk to each other and exchange speeds and location limits of uh, data. <laughs> so that drivers would be able to see three cars in front of them on each side and in the back, all at the same time. So you can imagine how drivers would be much more aware of their surroundings. It doesn't stop here, though. Intel has been working on the same type of intercommunication, but this time between cars and infrastructures. For example, dri uh, drivers um, would be alerted that the green light will only be on for the next three seconds before it turns yellow. This would leave them enough time to press the brakes. It's pretty innovative and amazing. The same type of uh, concept applies for street signs. Drivers would be alerted that uh, there's a school zone in the area, so they'll be able to slow down. So you could imagine how this could dramatically increase the safety of children. It could also help you from you know, being pulled over by the police and get a really big fine and lose a lot of points. Um, so driving safety is one example, but how can we protect what matters the most in life? As Gandhi said wisely, health is the real wealth. And yes, big data can actually completely revolutionize healthcare. I have another statistic for you, again, because I love uh, data so much, and I'm sure you've noticed. So this one is from our fellow American neighbors. By better integrating um, big data analytics, the healthcare industry could help save $300 billion a year, which is the equivalent of reducing healthcare costs for every man, women, and child by $1,000 a year. Big data can now predict pandemics. Researchers are now able to use data from various sources, such as social media, um, mobile phones, and even public health um, sources of data to start identifying um, disease outbreaks. Did you know that the Midas Research Group came up with a study in which they were able to predict the number of people who would get sick in the next four weeks? You're probably wondering how they were able to guess that. Well, they looked at the number of Wikipedia page views related to diseases. They were also able to monitor anonymized public tweets for keywords related to flu, so that they were able to identify those emerging trends and respond to them on time. Another way big data can actually help this sector is through personalized uh, treatments. So it's a bit of the same concept as uh, companies giving you personalized products based on what they know about you. Over 3 million Canadians have asthma. Um, as you could imagine, even if you don't have asthma or you don't know anyone who has asthma, uh, it's really important to keep track of the place and time at which they get their crisis um, every time they need to actually use their inhaler. 
So this company called Propeller Health came up with a genius idea. They were able to develop a sensor that is placed into the inhaler so that every time the patient uses their inhaler, the sensor would communicate this information, which is the location and time, to their phone, because they developed a phone app to cover that. So patients are then able to take these patterns, these health patterns, and send them directly to their doctor so they can prescribe to them the proper treatment and even personalized treatment. So let's bounce off this concept for a second. What else can we track about our health patterns? Could we track our lifestyle habits, the frequency at which we get ill, the family history of diseases? What if we used all this and combined it with our genome information? Now you could see how we could probably do great wonders with big data in the healthcare industry. Now here's one side of big data that could be worrisome for many of us, including myself. How do we feel about you know, Big Brother watching? Talking about big data also implies talking about privacy, and privacy concerns still exist. So first of all, companies need to be absolutely transparent with consumers. If we are collecting information about you, we need to tell you what we're collecting and why we're collecting it. So you'd be reassured to know that some companies do that. Um, phone apps are a great example of transparency. Whenever you're about to download a phone app, um, you'll get the request to have access to all kinds of data in your phone. But if you're not OK with the terms, you can't install the app. Second of all, there needs to be some kind of a balance between the uh, company's need to gather all this information and the consumer, um, the value the consumers will see in return. So I think there's a real need for companies to really educate consumers, especially when it comes to topics like healthcare. If I'm collecting more information about your health to help you live longer and healthier, as long as this is communicated to you properly and that you have the ability to opt out at any time, you're probably going to be OK sharing with this, this information. Finally, um, the government has their share of responsibility, the responsibility to keep privacy regulations in place. So for example, the European Union, Union uh, released a set of guidelines uh, to help protect consumers. So you may have heard of website cookies before. Um, European websites now have the legal obligation to announce to all their new online visitors that they are using cookies to track their browsing history. They also have the legal obligation to tell them what they will, will do in this, with this information and what they will not do with this information. So this is only a first step and there's still some way to go, but I really believe we're heading in the right direction, especially with everything that big data has to offer. So in conclusion, what we've learned today is that um, big data can have a massive impact on the society the way we live, um, especially when it's combined with the right technology. Uh, the impact that could have on healthcare and transportation is it's only a few examples of what it could do. I really invite you to get more information about the potential impact it could have on environmental protection, weather prediction, and even our educational systems. Finally, um, there's just one last thing I want to ask from you. Close your eyes for one little moment and think of one single potential impact that big data could have on yourself, on a family member, or someone you really care about. How would that make you feel? Thank you.